Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I am back in the studio today with a fun new project. This is kind of another stage for uh, what will be another video down the line where I'm going to make uh, this little notebook with this really cute open binding. And um, it's made from all recycled materials. So a few days ago, I had um, done a tutorial. Actually, I did two. I did one for experienced makers um, that's really kind of just the basic down and dirty. Here's how I did it. Here's the measurements and go for it on these um, art travel journals. So you can put different little art supplies, different kinds of paper in it, and then um, take it with you and have something to do when you're, you know, out and about. <clears throat> so this one, both of these were made using recycled materials, again, um, for the cover. Um, and this is what I mean by this has drawing paper in it and then just a few uh, tools. I also did one with coloring book pages. So I'll put the links for those videos down below. Again, there's a short one and then there's a really long one for beginners that goes into great detail and tools and all that kind of stuff. But both of these were made with junk mail. And so I wanted to do a video on how I got my junk mail to um, become these painted collage papers. So that's what today's video is going to be. I also just uploaded another video, uh, the, the two parts, two recycled parts that are needed for this project were writable um, recycled book page. And so that video I just put up and I will put a link to this video down below. It's a short one. Um, just how to make your, uh, the best way that I found, I did some experimenting on how to make book page writable and the best pen to use so you can take a look at that today what we're going to do is we're going to hand paint junk mail for our collage papers now i'm going to use a gel uh, jelly plate if you don't have a jelly plate you can still do this project and you can still paint your junk mail um, but what i'll do is share a link i think it was in this series where i did the bohemian travel journal Everything in this book, if you have not been following me, everything in this journal is made from recycled book page. So all this paper that you see, I hand painted. And I did all that before I owned a jelly plate, I think. I think I did this all just um, by hand. So I have a tutorial, I believe, that I can put a link to down below uh, for how I did this in case you don't have a jelly plate or don't wanna buy a jelly plate. I also have, um, I haven't made the video, but I know there are some out there. You can make a jelly plate um, at home uh, with stuff, and it's like with Knox gelatin and then a few other ingredients. I haven't tried it yet. I bought all the stuff to do it, but I haven't done it yet. So um, look those up if you want to make your own um, jelly plate. It's uh, less expensive. I think when I priced it out, it was less expensive than buying one. So I will put the link to this, how to do these painted papers. The other thing you can do is if you don't want to paint any paper and you like all this colorful stuff, hand painted papers, I do have this paper pack in my Etsy shop for sale. So um, you can always just do that and then collage with that. So, and today, because we're gonna do it with a jelly plate and junk mail, I'm gonna kind of just go over the materials that you're gonna need. Um, junk mail, I have just grabbed some different things. It, they can be shiny or not shiny, doesn't really matter, different sizes, doesn't matter. You're gonna tear everything up anyway at the end. So I just grabbed some junk mail that I had. And then this is just, I have never tried this before, but I've used like magazine pages um, and it works okay. They're a little, these are a little thinner. So we'll see how they do with the jelly plate. They might be a little bit thin, but having the paint on them uh, will make them thicker. It, it doesn't really matter how thin they are for the collaging part. It's just more of being able to peel them up off my jelly plate. So we're going to try this today. I haven't, I haven't done it with this before, but you know, this is just a bunch of paper. So I have cut these um, you know, they're, they're the sale things that you come in the newspaper. So I cut them to kind of roughly eight and a half by 11, no bigger than that. Mostly because where I want to store these, that's the size of my container. And then also the jelly plate, I'm going to use, um, the biggest one that I'm going to use today is I think eight by 10 or something like that, which doesn't really matter the way I'm going to do it. It doesn't really matter what size your paper is. So, um, you need paper, 
Uh, if you don't have a jelly plate and you've been thinking about investing in one, there's all kinds of brands. This one's Gel Press, and I think I'm going to use this one today. Um, and I think this is the one that might be the 8x10. It's probably on here. Yeah, 8x10. And then um, this one's by Delusions. Um, I'm going to use these two. This one was like a set of three. And if you want, I'll, I'll put links to these down below also um, in case you just like to, if you don't have one and you just like to go find them. They come in these clamshells that you need to save. And I didn't know that the very first one that I bought. Um, but you want to save these because you want to store them in there. So I'm going to... I'm going to use, and then they have this little acetate, thick acetate. I don't need that. But I'm going to use this little round one. It's a three-inch round. I love that one. Um, and I'm going to use this one. The reason I keep multiple sizes going once I get started, you'll see why. I like to use the jelly plate to clean off my brayer in between. Um, so I have multiple plates kind of going at once. Um, and that just kind of makes the whole process kind of go fast. And I'm going to use, I think, the 8x10 and the this other little one. And like I said, all three of these are different brands. They're all, you know, kind of the same stuff. Oops. And I'm working with it on um, a glass mat, um, just because that way it sticks to it. And you can see I haven't cleaned, I don't clean mine in between because I like things grungy and um, all this grungy paint that's on there will come up in another um, pole. Okay, so you're gonna need your jelly plate and I think I'll flip it over, I don't know what I have on the back there, but this is the side that has, you can see where I've been doing it before and get these all kind of laid out where they're gonna this one has paint on both sides i think i'll do this side and then my circle and then the other thing you need is a brayer um i'm not sure which one i'll use i i usually don't clean my brayer either um but it was getting so thick and because i like stuff grungy i didn't mind that the buildup of paint kind of gave it a texture. Any texture, any little piece of string or anything like that that's on there, a glob of paint or anything, it will transfer to your design. When you're doing what I'm doing, it doesn't matter, but if you were trying to, you know, do something specific and neat and tidy, you might not want that little thing that's going to look like a flaw in there. So I'm not sure. I might use both of these. So I have um, brayer. Then you need paint. I have, after I've been doing this for a bit, I found that I really like these Liquitex basic acrylics. And you can get these at Michael's. Walmart even carries them. Um, but I really like the texture of the paint and the color and all that kind of stuff. Pulled out just some other craft paint that I'm trying to use up for storage, if nothing else. And I also, I'm going to try out today, which I haven't tried before. I bought this iridescent medium, and this is from uh, Royal Langnickel. It's it's kind of a base, uh, it says mix with any acrylic paint to give colors an iridescent finish. So I just thought that might be fun to try. I like little sparkly things, you know, that's really fine like that. So I might try some of that. But you can use any kind of paint. You can even use your inks and stuff like that too, your distress inks. Um, will work, but I, today I'm just going to do paint. I'm just really wanting to get some background. They're going to end up, you know, like I said, all torn up. And then textures. So you can grab just anything that will make a imprint, a design texture on your gel plate. So this is just like from a potato bag, it's bubble wrap. Then I keep this little drawer um, lace. You can actually um, when it's open lace like this, a big open weave and it's kind of sturdy, you can see I've used it already. Um, you can imprint that in there. Um, fine lace and stuff doesn't really work as well. Doilies and stuff would work. You can buy these combs. In fact, I, I need to soak this and clean it because I've, I've been bad and um, it's not going to comb so well with paint in between. But you can use an actual comb. But this little comb has... Um, just different, four different sides that will kind of just make marks. You can al always just use the, you know, use a little skewer. Um, you you want to be careful if you're using anything metal. 
um, or sharp. You don't want to indent permanently in your gel plate because that will be a permanent flaw in your gel plate forever. So whatever you do, you just want to do it gently for texture in your paint. Um, but you can use, you know, the end of a pencil. Um, you, I've used little, um, uh, just any kind of tool. I've used uh, like the end of daubers, that kind of thing could work. Um, I've got in here, you know, a card could make lines. I've got some screen I have to be careful with. I have some big um, clock gears and things. I have a whole little drawer somewhere else where you can, you know, kind of leave a little imprint, a little design. Bottle caps work. You know, this is from my glue stick. Um, just pouncing tools, you know, to make little circles. Uh, wine corks. Um, here's Oh, here's more of my little um, clock gear things to make different designs. This is just a little plastic fork. So just any kind of thing I even grabbed today. I had this thread spool that has a neat shape on the bottom. So just anything that you can use to make some kind of design and texture. The other thing, if you have, um, not necessary, but if you have them, uh, you can do some reverse stuff and I'll show you, oops, show you how to do that with some stencils. And I kind of call these my background textural stencils because they're all just kind of, that's kind of a burlapy pattern. They all kind of just, um, you know, leave kind of nice background patterns. So, you know, different shapes, just whatever you have, um, you know, the, that might look good. These could look, these little flowers. Um, these are kind of more like a mask kind of a stencil, um, but those leave nice shapes, you know, just anything. So I grabbed all these thinking I might want to play around with some different shapes. And then even um, these are just cardstock from things that I've cut out with my Cricut. And I just, it, it made just a nice kind of repetitive pattern. These make nice shapes too. You know, they won't last forever. Um, but they're, you know, when you get paint on them, they were paper, but the paint builds up and this kind of makes them more durable too, even though they're not made out of plastic. But um, I've used them over and over, so they work. I really like the circle one. So that, and then for the next step, after the first part, the backgrounds, I'm gonna do some some more stenciling on the papers, but this will come later. I don't even know if I'll do this part today. I may do the first step in this video and then come back and do the second one after they've dried. Then the other thing, you need a place to dry your paper. You may have a setup already uh, if you paint paper or do things like that. I have a little setup because I'm doing this video thing. Over my work, over this workspace, I have a thing called a glide gear and it holds my phone, which is up here for, that's what I'm filming with. So it's kind of an apparatus that kind of goes like this. So I actually have a piece of twine that's like a clothesline across and clothes pins. So you might see some shadows because I'm gonna be clipping my papers up where my, where my camera is um, to dry as I go through this. So I apologize if that becomes a problem, I'll maybe have to pause and figure something else out. That's my setup here on my table. Um, and I really only have this workspace, so it's gonna get kind of messy. Um, you might want a baby wipe or something just to clean your hands, but I'm just going to go for it. Or you could wear gloves. So I'm going to just start and go for it. I haven't painted in a while, so we'll just see what happens. But this is one of my very favorite colors. So you just want to put a little bit of paint on your gel plate. And then I think I'll just use this little one since it's already dirty. So you just do a thin layer. And, you know, because this is going to be grungy, I don't really care how it all works, you know. Um, this is just putting paint on and you can see I'm getting lines in it already because I kind of have a mess and I probably have stuff on here, but again, I'm doing grungy, so I don't care. Now you can let, as you do something, you can kind of let it dry. It will pull up when you do another, um, a next pull. This is how you can layer color on top of color or pattern on top of pattern. So I'm gonna just put this color down and then I think I'll grab, just to kind of show you how it works, the different ways you can do this. You can put a stencil down and then I'm gonna have a pile of book page here also. And you can take up that paper that, or the paint that is in that stencil. You wanna do that while your paint is still wet. 
and you see it comes up on there. So as we go along, you'll maybe already have a solid background on this and then come back and, and use that piece of paper to pull up this bit of color. And it gives you pattern on pattern already. We'll just kind of go along here and maybe I put another color on this side. And you can, um, you can go over this now with another color if you wanted. That's not gonna show up very well because my paint, I don't have much paint on there. So this is a really horrible job I'm doing. But we'll get a we'll get a roll going here soon. So I'm not gonna do too much because I need to get that cleaned off. You kind of have to some some of your junk mail will be um, have a lot of print on it or a lot of color on it already. So you may have to do it over and over again. Now I could put another piece of paper here to pull this up, but I'm gonna leave it because you're gonna see when I pull this paper up, it it's not gonna pull up those two colors. So when I go back with more paint, I'm gonna throw in another color. So if you look at this, you can see where it pulled up some orange paint that was left on my plate from before. But I really like that, you know, it's gonna take more layers to cover up this print, but that's okay. I, It's gonna be layer on layer on color on color. And I'm just trying to make some really fun backgrounds. And I'm gonna pull this up now. And I could go over this with a whole other color and I'm gonna take something totally different. And I'm gonna use this other brayer since the color is so different than the green that I already had on there. And the more you roll this out, the more you're gonna maybe blend. So I'm turning purple over here because it's in magenta on top of that blue and, and that sort of thing. But now I have something over this whole bit. So let's see if I do that and maybe even a little green. And I'm gonna use these other gel plates here to kind of clean off my brayer in between. And it'll just layer up on there and then at some point I'll pull it off. And the other thing that I can do, I can pull this all on one, or the other thing I can do is, because I want each piece of paper to look like a collage itself, is I could take two different pieces and put on this. And as I get going here, you're gonna see, I'm gonna end up with paint on all three of these, and I'm gonna be overlapping everything. So you just kind of rub, 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 if you've never done this. And if it feels cold, it's wet. So you kind of want to, you know, get that really rubbed down where it doesn't feel so cold, and then it's gonna peel up more. And you just see how cool that looks. Now all those colors and even a little bit of that pattern showed up. So you never know what you're gonna get. I love doing it like this where I don't really care. It's, it's just kind of whatever happens, happens. So I really like that whole aspect of doing it this way. Um, I've watched some videos of people who are really talented that are very intentional. They create a scene and do all kinds of stuff that is, you can tell they know what they're doing and I don't. So. I'll keep working on all these papers, even getting these white edges gone. And I'll just keep, you know, kind of grabbing as they dry. I'll hang them up above me here and grab a new one. And I'll just keep going and putting color down. So I'm just gonna randomly start doing this. I may stop talking and um, just fast forward and let you watch for a bit if you want. And then I'll come back um, maybe when I have something to say, we'll see. So um, I don't know how this is gonna go. It's been a long time since I've done this and I don't know that I've done a video where I've done this on camera. So I'm trying to get more comfortable actually crafting on camera. Um, if you've watched me for a while, I, I didn't really do my videos that way. I kind of showed after everything was finished. Um, And then maybe I let that dry a little bit and maybe do another color.
So then I can come back and take one that I've already started and that kind of will fit here. So if I want, I can just pull that up. And then maybe grab another one. So it really, I can get just some solid color on these as a background first, just to cover up some of this text, because it's gonna take, it's gonna take several layers. I'm gonna end up covering up all the design I just did. So that's one. And then let's see. Now, the other thing is you can kind of see maybe in this, the Liquitex paint is thicker. It's just a thicker, creamier, nicer paint. So what happens is um, when, you, when you then go with this cheaper paint, it doesn't always um, mix well. It, it might get a weird texture. Plus some of this craft paint that I have, you see it doesn't even cover all of it. Some of this is really old, so it might just be kind of gone off. But you can kind of see how you're, you can blend the colors together. I don't know if that's showing up very well. So the more you go back and forth, the more you're gonna mix those colors. And so if you don't want to, stop doing that. So you can also just use or a book page and just clean your brayer off on a piece of paper to the side because you can end up going back and using that too. Grab another something that's more solid. And then I go back and take one of these and go maybe a different direction. And then grab another piece. So this is what I mean by I'm just kind of filling up my paper by putting it on different parts of these different jelly plates. So you can see that's just a little spot, but I'm gonna end up filling this whole thing up. So I'll set that one aside. I'm pulling that one up. So you can kind of see you're just color blocking and getting your background on. I try to just do these maybe with colors that I think will look good together, you know, while they're together on this, but they're all kind of layering on top of each other and I, I don't mind that at all. Like this one, by the time I pull it, who knows what that's gonna look like. I ended up getting a bunch that kind of ended up looking like um, the moon or planets because of the way all the layers kind of get stuck on there. So you can even, you know, take, um, these dots and then grab a piece of this and you pull up so you start getting all these different you know layers and textures so this is going to be quite a long process um, so I'll probably just be kind of coming back and forth um, with things Let's see, make some stripes here. And grab just another something. I could use this side because it's white. And then maybe grab this corner of this one for here. And another piece here, maybe. It, once it gets dry, it won't come up now, but it'll come up later when I um, go to add to it. So let's just kind of see. So I'm gonna work at filling up these backgrounds. Um, but, but you can kind of see how you're starting to now cover up all that text. So a few more layers and I won't even see that anymore. And then this will just be a nice, fun collage paper. 
Now this one didn't come up as much because it was getting dry. So I'll do more of the stencil and that kind of stuff after I kind of get a base going. So I'm gonna just, I think, throw down some paint here.
I have a huge mess. I'm almost finished, at least with this stage. So before I do, I want to um, turn the camera back on and kind of show you where I'm at. This is, you know, this. I ended up grabbing a couple of pieces of recycled printer paper too because I was running out of junk mail. Um, but you can see now, most of them you don't see any text. I've just kept overlapping my papers, layering and layering until I've covered it up. I don't mind um, the text from the book page showing through. Um, junk mail, not so much, but I don't mind the, the book page. You can see this one has the iridescent. I ended up, rather than mixing uh, the iridescent with paint, I just put it right onto my plate over whatever was there. Um, again, you can see the iridescent. So that's kind of just a nice little sparkle. Now this is junk mail and you can still see a lot of the text through, but I'm gonna do some more uh, layers to this. So I think it's gonna be fine. I, I kept forgetting to pull off my circle. So I ended up with way too much paint on it. So it really scarred and came off in weird chunks. But um, you can just kinda uh, see what the effect of using just those background stencil patterns and I'm going to do one more I think um, just so you can in case you missed it I, I don't know how much I'm going to edit out of me actually working anyway I'm going to do one one more though so I'm going to use this one because I haven't used it yet so it's a little more fragile but we're going to see what it what it ends up like so I'm going to put something down what color do I want okay I think I'm going to do magenta for my first layer. So I'm gonna do this in stages. I'm gonna do a first layer before I put my stencil down. And this is quinacridone magenta. And then you put your stencil down. So I'm gonna just drop it here. And now I can use other papers, which I'm gonna do right now, to kind of pull up some of this these shapes so you can see it just adds that shape to that paper so I'm going to do that and kind of get all of the this first part pulled up for design you can see it's a way if I look at a paper and I say okay my balance is off I want some magenta over there then I can just kind of rub it up so I'm going to go through all my papers and just look and see if I want magenta on any of them and where I might want it. And what this does, too, is it ties, uh, when you start doing these details a little bit on every one, it ties all of your papers together. It makes them cohesive, you know, if you're going to use them in the same project. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through... You can see how fun this is. Um, it's not so much fun at the beginning, I think, because it's like me, I was a little tentative at first and it doesn't look like much. And so you're kind of thinking you're not doing a good job, um, but that's okay because that's how, that's how this kind of goes. And like I said, I'm really, I haven't been in the studio in so long that I haven't done anything like this in months and months and months just about covered my area here and my last one so I'm just gonna see what's left okay so I have taken up um, and now the magenta will just be where those skinny lines are in a perfect world um, and it's really kind of just gonna be around the edges because I'm pulling the magenta up with this. So I don't know if you can see this, maybe if I hold it up, if you can see that. So it's, it's giving me that pattern, but it's very subtle. So now you kind of, this'll dry, which is fine. And I want it to dry because I'm gonna put another layer, another contrasting color on top of that so that it will really pop. So I'm gonna use, I think, this light aqua. I haven't used this at all. Um, I've been using this one, but I want something a little lighter, I think, just because I'm getting a lot of the same colors on my papers, and I just want to throw in something different. So 
the other thing I could have done and I should have done, I'll maybe do it again, is before I put pull this up, and I don't know if I can lay it down, I may be able to, is I should have put this color on and left this stencil down because then it would have left that grid pattern better. So it's gonna be a little off now because I've pulled it up already, but it's okay. I don't think it's gonna matter. But I, I made a mistake. I should have put this color down before I pulled my stencil up and then pulled my stencil up and it'll, it'll look kind of better. So I don't have a ton of paint on there. I might put a little bit more. Because then I can do it again with a whole third color if I do it like this. And I'm messing up my... This stencil is a little more fragile because those little spaces in between are really skinny. So now I'm going to pull this up. So you can see where I had already put my paint, but that's okay, because I'm gonna do it in little sections again. Um, so I'm gonna just try this again. I'll just pull one up before I lay them all down to see if I like it, because that color is kind of light. I'm not sure I'm gonna like that, actually. I think I'm gonna go over it with another color. I'll pull it on some. It's just not bright enough for me. I mean, it's okay, but it's not. It's all going to get torn up anyway, but I, that's not, I'm not a huge fan of that color of blue. It ended up mixing too much and looking kind of gray. But you can see what it's doing. It's leaving me that, that pattern again, too. So I'll just kind of get rid of this. Then I want, oops. so you can kind of see what was left behind. Um, so I want something brighter, but what do I want? Maybe my turquoise that I like so much. I think I'm gonna start again with that one. But I think I'm gonna put a different shape on here now too. Um, maybe I'll go a little bit darker. No, I'm not going to love that either. I think a little more green in it. Okay, we're going to try this again. So I'm going to cover this up. Now, some of those shapes are going to pull up with the other. Um, I got too much paint on here. Um, some of those shapes, the grid and the rectangles are going to still come through and pull up because they are still there. I didn't get them all pulled up. So I think to start, I'm gonna grab my, maybe this shape, just because I've used a lot of circles, so I'll do this one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go back and pull up that paint. Just to leave another pattern on it. I might be getting too much pattern on these, but again, it's all going to get torn up anyway. But I guess I wanted you to see the process more. Maybe I'll grab a plain piece of paper again. Okay, I had to dig out a piece of scratch paper. So there's my pattern. Now I want to put another color down. What color do I want? Maybe this one. This is not a big contrasting color, but I don't care. I kind of want it to blend in. I'm not really happy with those other colors. Okay, now I'm going to pull this up. And then I can go through my papers and see if there's anywhere I want to add another little pattern, like maybe just right here.
Okay, you get the idea of how you keep transferring stuff. So I'm kind of running out of paper that I started the background of. Let me clean this off. And to clean this off, you wanna just do a contrasting color um, so that you don't waste the design. And while it's wet, you're gonna pull everything up. So I'm just gonna, I think, get some book page. and clean this one off. Do a whole one. Many parts of one. So this is kind of how I did the color blocking. I just layered um, my papers so that they're just getting parts, parts of it. So you can see it, it pulls up both of the colors, but then I still have a lot on here. So I'm gonna, this is why I kind of, you can do this for hours and hours because you keep wanting to clean off your plate and so you keep starting more papers that then aren't finished and then you need to do another layer. So it's kind of this vicious cycle. I'm gonna try some raw umber. But eventually you just have to force yourself to stop. So I'm about to that point. I didn't even get my walk in today. This one again. So the longer I let this sit here and, and dry on, the more I will pull up. But I have a feeling it's not going to all pull up again, so I think I'm going to now go a light color. So you can see how dark that is, but that's really a nice cool background. I had put quite a bit of paint on that. So I'm going to do another one with a lighter color then, and you'll see. Recycled copy paper where I've done test prints. So I'm going to use that, and then I'm just going to use some white craft, oops, white craft paint. Okay, that's not good which may end up getting blended with this umber and being kind of an antique kind of color, which is good. And I don't even mind all the little, I put a little too much paint. So I'll just clean it off over there. And see how that's, the paint is different kind of paint. So it's separating and mixing. That's actually gonna look really, really neat when it's, when I pull it up. So let me get rid of that. Is the back side because this might end up being something I want to use. And then I don't want to waste that circle. That's going to be kind of nice, I think. So let me find somewhere that it might want to live on there. So you see how you get some kind of neat circles and then it pulled up that paint that was all stuck on there, which is pretty thick because it was so many layers, but um, that little scarring. But you can see how they end up looking like planets. So you, I might do a thing where I try to intentionally kind of really figure out how to, um, you know, maybe with that iridescent would be really pretty and some, you know, grays and earthy colors and that kind of thing um, and make some little planet, you know, you do planet colors. So you see how you're cleaning it off and it's just looking like an old vintage book cover or something. That's kind of neat. So I'll have to use that. And this one was pretty thin paper, just cheap copy paper. But look at all that yummy color that came off of that. You know, put that on some cardstock backing and use it for something. 
or just in collage. This is really pretty. So I still have, I could still, all the scarring here, all of that is still really pretty. Um, and this is why I never end, but I think I want to do my turquoise I love and try to clean some of that off too. More and more. But I'm getting quite a bit of it off now. So you just kind of keep doing this until you get as much cleaned off as you want before you put it away. So I'll do another piece of that. Um, paper that's really nice when you want to, I mean, you can use watercolor paper or any kind of mixed media paper and pull these off and then they'll be on a nice, you know, sturdier paper. Um, but you can always, the 32 pound hammer mill paper that I use too, that um, is actually a really a nice weight then to use for, um, you know, like, it's like scrapbook paper, like heavy scrapbook paper. So see that one, and look how pretty that those are together. So you just use contrasting colors so that it shows all the grungy stuff that came up. Um, but that's really pretty too. So you can see now that that pretty much cleaned off that mat pretty well, this gel plate pretty well. So I can just go ahead and put that one away. And hopefully this one is gonna be Oh yeah, I just love this turquoise color. That looks really good. So I really like that a lot. That's a neat background. Okay, so that color, just so you know, in case you wondered, um, bright aqua green is that one. Um, these are some of my favorites. Quinacridone magenta, bright aqua green. I love the raw sienna and the um, light olive green. Those are probably my favorites. So. Um, there are other colors that I don't have here. I have at the other studio. And I'm going to improve my stock here um, once I'm running out of these little cheap craft ones because I just don't have a lot of room to store them. So um, that's it. I think this is clean enough, too. There's some nice scarring on the corner um, that I could peel off or leave for the next time because uh, that always gives you those old-looking edges um, that I really like. So I don't, I like kind of leaving that on there. So I'll put these away, clean up my mess. Okay, now I need to wrap this up before my battery dies here, but I have um, cleaned up my mat, put away my paint. I do want to mention a couple things um, about that. My jelly plates, I have left um, the way that you saw them. Um, I left the little bits around them for next time. I am not going to recommend that to anyone. Um, that's just because I like grungy things and I don't mind it at all. But that's really not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to actually clean them, I think, with warm water, maybe soapy water. I can't remember soap, yes or no. Um, but follow the manufacturer's instructions. And the reason I say that is because all those little bits, anything that you've left on there could scar your gel plate. So um, if I've left a, a big thing in the middle and put it away that way, it might make an indentation that never goes away. So, um, you know, uh, don't follow what I do if you want to keep your gel plate nice. I just like my stuff grungy. So I ended up not using a bunch of stencils or backgrounds and stuff. Um, you can use more if you want or less. Uh, you can do actually even that first background where you just have everything covered without all these dot textures and all that. But um, I just like to do it on my jelly plate because it's fun and, and I just get carried away with it. So um, I had went ahead and done that. What you can do and what I did in this one, again, because I did not have a jelly plate then, I and mean, I did have a few stencils, but that was it, is all the textural backgrounds you see in these papers were all done after. So I basically, for this one, just slapped paint on with a brush, different you know brushes and things, um, and made a mess. And then did some stenciling on top of that doing kind of the same procedure where I would pick one color um, and I would you know go through one paper and, and stencil in it, the same color and the same stencil and I would maybe do a tiny bit here and then pull this one and do a tiny bit here and just do that on all your pile of papers um, and that again makes it cohesive and then you just maybe pick a different stencil and a different color of paint and do the same thing. So you don't have to have a gel pl uh, jelly plate to do this. 
Um, just pick a few stencils that you like and just kind of randomly do things. So I think for this next part, um, I'm not going to do a lot of that. Maybe I'll do a little bit just because I, I like to and I, I love this stencil. So maybe I'm going to grab just that one and that one and not get too carried away here. Um, and just kind of show you. I also like doing this one. So maybe I'll just do a little bit of that. Um, so you can kind of see what I mean in case you're not going to use the gel press. I think, let's see, what colors do I want to do? Because I've done so much color um, on my papers, when I did the ones before, all I did was used black or white, and I used black um, to do the other design. I If I use this one, I may use um, another color. We'll see. But I think I'm going to just grab this one at first and do black. And then the other, the one that I really liked, and I don't think I'll use both because I'm just trying to keep it simple, is um, I liked this alphabet. This um, this is from Sean Petit, and it's um, type text, old type text large is the stencil. And I can maybe put a link to that. I really like paisleys and things too, so I may do a little bit of that. I used this one in my Bohemian journal a lot. Um, and one thing, just since I'm kind of talking about that too, um, what I did was I'm not a good stenciler when it comes to trying to do these things to look good. So what I did on the ones that I wanted to really be a focal point was um, I actually traced the d stencil with a pen and then went over it just like it, like it was a coloring book or something, um, outlined it in a metallic pen and, and used metallic um, gel pens to color those in and that was just kind of a fun thing to do at night while you're watching tv um, kind of like doodling so uh, you know if you're not good at stenciling like I am not um, then you you know you can trace them if you want the designs to be kind of a focal point so this is a fun one to do that with this was another one mud cloth this one's um, Sean Petit also that makes nice marks you know just to randomly place those with black is nice you don't have to do that. You can just actually use a, a paint marker and just leave marks that you want to. But kind of how I would do it, and put these aside. I have limited space here. Is I'm just going to get some black craft paint, put a little on my thing there, and then hopefully I have a makeup sponge. Um, I just bought these on Amazon. Some artist makeup sponges. And then I'm just going to randomly, you know, pick one. So I'll like use one stencil and then do it on all of. Just do like that much, you know, and it just adds that uh, another layer. So I'll just kind of go through and do them all a little bit different. Like this one, maybe I'll do all around, but just the center. You know like that so just kind of go through all your papers and add some kind of little extra thing I'll go through all these and just kind of aim it someplace that needs where I don't have paint you know some white spots or that kind of thing and you can just do as much as or as little as you want now this one I had some text still showing so I'll kind of aim for covering some of that up So it's just kind of fun. And these could, you know, you could end up not tearing these up. Maybe you like them for, you know, journal cards or, you know, other things. Um, but I just kind of, I kind of do them thinking I'm going to be tearing them up and using them for collage. Maybe I'll do another little bit over here. And then I also like this one I found myself a lot of times using with like the magenta color that I really like. I put a piece of painter's tape um, just because sometimes I want just one straight line, so I've chosen that line on the edge. Um, and that way it's, it isolates just that one little stripe if I want to make a little, um, you know, single stripe. Like that. But I, I kind of like, you know, doing it here or there. So it just kind of adds, you know, that extra thing. So um, I'll do this. I'll speed up the video again and, and kind of run through and do some of these just for fun.
Okay, so you get the idea. Um, I went ahead and just used a couple just for time. I mean, they're all gonna get torn up. It really doesn't matter, right? So I did some black. I did a little bit of the light just so you could see with the little bubble stencil, just so you can see what that would look like. This isn't white, white. It's the antique parchment that I like to use. Um, so you can just see, it's just kind of gives it that one little thing. Um, obviously if you were going to use these in big pieces, like, um, I've been using painted papers in my, uh, journals. When you're going to do that, I do more detail because I'm using larger pieces and don't want focal points and that sort of thing. But you know, this was all just a way to use up junk mail. Um, and now I have paper that I don't mind tearing up. It was a fun afternoon to spend. Um, I probably, I'll have to look at the time, but I was probably here for uh, probably a couple hours at least working on this, even though I fast forwarded and cut you out of part of it, but um, you just get the idea. So um, it's not rocket science, it's a lot of fun. It's a way to use up your junk mail. And now I have some papers to tear apart to work on. Um, the next step, which will be making this cute little cover. So I hope that you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave your comments. Um, I think it's clear from this, anybody can do it. I am definitely not an expert. Um, it's just something I discovered that I love doing. So um, have a great rest of your day. Now go make something, bye.